Hey guys, today we are going to talk about why Wizards of the Coast does not recognize the secondary market, mainly for legal reasons. So they recognize that cards have different prices, and booster packs were a randomization of cards with different prices, and some cards are worth more than the pack of than the booster pack itself, then that would be gambling. And now what makes this very difficult for Wizards of the Coast is if it is decided it is gambling, the major player base, which is children or minors, would not be able to purchase booster packs. So they have to not recognize the secondary market. They have to be very subtle. So we all know that this is gambling. When you open a pack and you hope to have Everyone's hoping to get a card in it worth more than a pack. And if you do, you've won kind of a, like a lottery. So we talk about the masterpieces. Their motto is exactly like a lottery. If you open a masterpiece, it's kind of like you won a little bit of money. Very similar to the tickets that they sell in convenience stores as well as deli stores in New York City. In Houston, lottery is, lotteries are always found in gas stations. So if you go to a gas station and you bought a scratch-off ticket, you're hoping that the ticket will have more money than you paid for it. Very similar to when you open a booster pack. Now, Wizard of Coast can never state it as simply as that. They can recognize that their consumers place a undisclosed value on a certain card and that card can be sold on a secondary market for more than the price of the booster pack and then they can de depending on that card they can adjust volume via reprints essentially when you talk about masterpieces you talk about tamagoyfs you talk about all this stuff you can produce enough to meet the demand. So if you see a card, at, if they see a card at $150, they don't need to recognize it at $150, but at the same time, they can use it to promote it to sell a product because they know it's $150. One clear example of something that happened here was Wizard of Coast said that Snapcaster Mage was shifted to Mythic because there was too much excitement at Rare and not enough excitement at Mythic. So to balance out the excitement level. What does excitement mean? It means money. So essentially they are very, they recognize that mythics should be valuable. They recognize that masterpieces are valuable. And at the end of the day, they do a song and dance so they can continue to sell what is pretty much gambling. And now we're just talking about booster packs. I will make a separate video talking about tournaments and how everyone kind of puts their money together and then there's a prize payout. So when you determine Magic, when you label Magic the Gathering as gambling, that's how I treat it when I open packs, when I open boxes, because it is gambling. And there is a sense of, oh my goodness, I can make money from this, so I'm going to keep opening. And it is a little bit of addicting, so... Once a month, I go with my friends and my significant other to the Casuto Casino in Louisiana. I am, you know, not a huge gambler, but I go to the casino and I don't expect to make money from it, right? You go to the casino and if you make money, that's great. If you don't, well, you went to a casino. What, could, what can you say? The same can be applied for magic. A lot of people want to make money from magic. However, that doesn't really make any sense, right? Because... If magic is a gamble and opening packs is a gamble and going to a tournament is a gamble and gambling can be skill, poker is considered gambling and it is a skill based, luck based, very similar to magic cards actually and that's why a lot of magic players are poker players and a lot of poker players are magic players because there is that luck based skill element. Now when you talk about the gambling aspect, who goes into gambling believing they can make money? That's a very, very foolish concept, right? No one would be like, I'm going to go, go to casino every day so I can make a living from casino life and that's what I'm going to do. But that's what some people do for Magic the Gathering. They want to open packs. They want to make money from MTG Finance. They want to become a Magic the Gathering pro. Now at the 
poker level, you can be a pro professional poker player, and that's what you're doing. But at the end of the day, you're taking money from somebody. So as a very small percentage of the people who play poker can do it on a professional level. The same can be said for Magic the Gathering, if not an even smaller percentage. But booster packs, tur tournaments, there it is gambling, and that's why they cannot recognize the secondary market until now. It is very clear that Modern Masters 2017 has recognized the secondary market. There's no other explanation for it, except they reprinted all the things that needed to be reprinted and they understood that it would help sell the product they're not dumb and they understand that how much tomogorf is they know how lily of the how much lily of the veil is they know how much snapcaster maids is so when they do this song and dance where they pretend that they're not gambling it's kind of dishonest and it's misdirection right and you might say oh are, are not sports cards gambling or not you know opening sports cards or you know, what is gambling and what is not gambling, it's somewhat arbitrary. But when you have people opening packs, people are addicted to opening packs. And I have some friends who are very addicted to doing that in hopes of making money, then that's kind of the definition of gambling. Now, if you buy something, it's like the other thing would be monopoly, right? McDonald's monopoly. That is a question, right? of randomness it is a question of no purchase necessary so when you deal with all this technology of techno technically it is gambling but it's not gambling it's a very gray area uh, but if wizard of coast ever got hit for doing gambling like masterpieces they would be in a lot of trouble they would no longer be able to sell to minors it used to be, and I think this is why we didn't have anti. So anti used to be we would shuffle our decks and then we would place the top card for gamble pretty much. So whoever won the game would get to keep their card again and then your opponent's card. So if you ever wondered what anti is, if you went into like older sets and anti cards are all banned and they will never be reprinted again, anti is when Magic Gathering was actually gambling. It was whenever you played a game, you would gamble a card, very similar to Pogs back then. And then suddenly it changed, and they probably realized, someone in Wizard of the Coast realized this is not the way to do it. The way to do it, of course, is Masterpieces. So Masterpieces is pretty much the definition of gambling, a high-value card in a low probability. And there are some winners, and then there are the majority of people who are losers. Very, very similar to a scratch-off ticket um, in that scenario. So is Magic the Gathering gambling? Yes. The takeaway point here, let's assume Magic the Gathering is gambling. Then why would anyone expect to win money? Why would the majority of people expect to win money from gambling? Right? That doesn't make any sense. Like You don't go to a casino and expect to come in, come out with more money than you came in with. Gambling is gambling, and magic is no different from that. You will all the house, which is the Wizard of the Coast, will always eventually win. You cannot beat the house. Now, in the scenario of poker players, when the house takes a percentage of earnings, in this case, Wizard of the Coast would do that too, and you sign up for a tournament, and then there's a tournament prize, but it is less than the money that everyone put in. And yes, I know people will say, oh, you get sleeves, you get pins. That's all very low production. There's still profit. People are only hosting a tournament because there is massive profit to be achieved. So anyway, that's my opinion. Do you believe Magic the Gathering is gambling or not? Leave me a comment below. And do you think that they should be regulated by state law? Um, maybe some percentage of it will go to charity like the lottery does. Anyway, bye guys.